following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! This is Talkin' Cowboys. Streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. Hand of Elliott plowing to the goal line. Barry sacked by Lord. Prescott keeps it and he bangs it into the touchdown. Here are Mickey Spagnola, Brian Broaddus, Rob Phillips, and Bill Jones. It's just not the same when Mickey isn't here to wave at the camera as we kick off Talking Cowboys. We expect his arrival shortly, I would think. And this is a terrific Tuesday edition of Talking Cowboys, and it seems like it's been forever since we have been in this room. It's been since last Friday, the day after the big win over the New Orleans Saints, and things have happened since then, including an NFC East showdown of sorts last night that leaves the Cowboys all alone in first place in the NFC East. Brian Broaddus, Rob Phillips, how y'all doing? Doing well. I think that ended up okay for you last night, didn't it? Is that the way you wanted it to play? Um, I think we said, just talking about it, yeah. probably want Philly to win that game. You didn't know that the Redskins would be down to their third quarterback, who they signed a week ago. So, you know, terrible for Colt McCoy, but that works probably in the Cowboys' favor, at yeah. least on paper. Yep. Never, cheer, got, never cheer for injury, but that helps. Yeah, you never do. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if I, – I, I don't think you, you should have cheered for either of those teams last night. Just – Take care of your own business. You've you've earned that opportunity to just take care of your own destiny, right? They're, so just, they're the Eagles and the Redskins. You don't cheer for either one of them. Fans were struggling with that <laughs> last night on Twitter, it seemed like. Yep, but just, now the, Cowboy, the Cowboys with that one-game lead on both the Eagles and the Redskins and with a win over Philadelphia 325 Sunday afternoon at AT&T Stadium. The Cowboys can be two games up on Philly. And Redskins play Giants this week. Who do they play this week? I don't. I got to check it out. But anyway, uh, regardless, with the injury situation, as Rob mentioned, with the Redskins, they're dead. Uh, with Mark Sanchez at quarterback, and they don't even have yeah. another quarterback. I can't believe they went all season without a practice squad guy. Somebody. Yeah. And then once Alex Smith goes down, they still didn't bring in a another young, even a young guy. Well, they've worked out a bunch of guys like the TJ TJ Yates, Yates of the and the, world, yeah, Kellen the, Clemens, Kellen Clemens. Yeah, they worked out a bunch of guys. So I don't know. They'll probably go to the same group of guys they've already worked out. So yeah. And they play at Jacksonville on all right, now they got the Giants and then at Jacksonville. Yeah. So there you go. Mickey Spagnola, how you doing? We missed your wave to the camera at the beginning of the show. And there's the salute from Mickey. Did you guys not want to tie last night? That was not what you were rooting for? Yeah, that's the other possibility these days in the NFL. And after you saw what Philadelphia did, do you wish Washington had won? No. No. Uh-uh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what do you lose say? on Sunday and you'll be wishing then Washington then had won. All right, no. so so no. if if that scenario played out and the Cowboys were They even, weren't going to win with Mark Sanchez playing quarterback. Well, I didn't got, say that. I well, you, said you, don't you before got all the excited game started. started. No, wow. I said before the game I, started. Philadelphia, wish. Philadelphia has Houston and the Rams. They, the, they play at the Rams yes. next week, yes. and then they've got Houston at yes. home and then the Redskins. Absolutely. So and Rob's right. right. Go take care of your game. All you got to do is take care of your business. Now, I, I kind of get your point in that, you know, be careful what you wish for because this is a Philly team now. It's won consecutive games for the first time all season. They got Sproles back, scored a touchdown last night. They look better. Don't they, they have flaws. They got issues in the secondary. They've, they've got bad, issues in the secondary. Bad issues. Um, but all it takes, like, all it takes is a win at AT&T Stadium Sunday, and this thing is is – even they're the two so, they're the team that was two games behind you right no they're one game back they were two games they were they were before two, yeah, yesterday exactly you yeah. get washington to I mean, win. they, they were if they lose yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah if they lost yeah yeah that would mean you get a cushion and then and the redskins would be even with you and if the redskins had a quarterback their closing schedule against the giants at jacksonville at tennessee and against philadelphia is look, appears to be on paper to be much easier than what the eagles face yeah down but the they stretch. were not good enough to win all those games even with alex smith in there or colt mccoy they were or winning colt this McCoy. division well, at one not, time they were up they were up in this oh division. yeah and they were fading quickly weren't oh, okay. they well they, they <laughs> lost their quarterback that hurts the, well, it's never good <laughs> That's my point. Okay. 
Which quarterback would you trust? How much wine Wentz? did you drink watching that game last Wentz? night? Wentz. <laughs> watched the whole thing. I saw you leaning on the bar like you were at some bar fly guy. Oh, that's Wentz. right. That what a big night it was. We yeah. buried the lead here. Wentz no, don't go McCoy. there. We don't need to be talking about a holiday party. <laughs> were you enjoying yourself or are you taking notes? Nah, Wentz or taking McCoy? Notes. Just answer the question. Uh, McCoy. You would rather McCoy than Wentz? You, no, as rather a, what? Which quarterback has a better chance of leading their team to the? I said I'd rather title. face McCoy than. Yeah, Wentz. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you want them to to win, because you got McCoy the rest of the way. Philadelphia wins. They got Wentz the rest of the way. Fair. Okay. okay Philadelphia. Philadelphia is not point. the same team. And there, and Brian's right. right. They're Philadelphia is not not the same team. Not, yeah. No. The, Philadelphia is a very beatable football team. But. Desperate team theory. Desperate they're team they're going to give it yes. everything they got Sunday. Yeah, they sure everything will. They, got. they absolutely will. And then if they if they can pull it off, it's tied. And you're right. They got to go win a couple well, of you tough better, games. You after know that. what? If you can't go out and beat Philadelphia at home, you know, and you put yourself in this position with a four game winning streak, then that's on you. Yeah, but at some point you're going to lose. Oh, geez, Mickey. Well, are you going to pick against them? <laughs> I'm just saying. Let's see. Let's see. Are they going to go Picked eight? against them last time. Are they going to go When they eight, played no? Philadelphia, they picked, you picked against them last They could. They're going to go 8-0. No they could. Okay. All right. What, what, what's the record with uh, Amari Cooper now? They're going 12-0, and 0, Mickey. I said they're going 12-0 oh, right. after, oh, after right. they yeah. fell to 3-5, oh, right. and, five and I researched Dak Prescott in college. Haven't they, haven't they done enough losing for you early in this year? This is this is like the Giants in, in uh, 86. Yep. Or it's kind of like the Cowboys in 71 when they won 10 straight to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. Was, All right. Yep, they won it that year. To answer your question, they're four and one with Amari Cooper yeah. on this team. They're a better football team now. Oh, I agree. I'm not saying they're not, but I'm saying at some You're point. You're saying they're you, gonna lose. You throw in a clunker. Oh, okay. Would you take three and one right now Tennessee? The, down the stretch? How about Tennessee? Was that a clunker for you? Yeah, it was. That was yeah, there you go. There's your clunker. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Nothing to see here, folks. Trying to win football games. All right, Jerry Jones was – oh, no, wait a second. Before we get to Jerry Jones, so did you have a good time at the yes, holiday party? Yes, I did. Party? Okay. Was, and, no, you and how about You sat there at the bar and watched the whole game. <laughs> you didn't socialize with anybody. I saw you go to the dessert area. You enjoyed that, obviously. I never touched watching dessert. Mickey. See, he, doesn't, he didn't even know because I didn't touch what, any dessert. What were you eating out of a cup? That was a mashed potato. Oh, you couldn't get a plate? It was a no, they <laughs> give it to you in a cup. Oh, it was it a, a mashed twice potato paper? bar? Oh, okay. See, he didn't even know. He didn't even go around. I, I was watching. He was socializing. Mickey. No, he wasn't. He was standing there watching Emerald City. <laughs> Mickey, Mickey was. I, I, Emerald I was, City was there. Oh, yes. Great, great band. Yeah. Great. I knew I was going to watch the game on tapes this morning, but Mickey was sitting there like he was, seriously, like he was some like. Uh, some I don't want to say a stockbroker with his tie undone watching you know the game on at the bar. Tie wasn't undone, and Henry and I were watching, and Henry was telling me what the play was going to be before the snap. Henry, that's his was, team. He's always he, working. That's his. He was team. amazed. So that's where Romo learned it. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. To call the play. Ahead Henry. Lo- he, Henry saw how he they lined Henry. up yeah. with two backs or, yeah. or two wide receivers wherever, and he goes, "That's a run play." Yeah. And then he saw the the. Uh, He's the advanced guy for that team. Yeah, That's why the, he knew the that. left tackle. <laughs> the left tackle was on his toes. Yeah, and he goes, "This is a pass play." And my and he God, was right. Mickey, it was Have great. Enough football to know that. I don't sit there and analyze the foot. How was the, the potatoes? Tackle, the potatoes right? good? It was okay. The sushi bar was great. There you go. Who had the best outfit? No, there was some. <laughs> there were some out. See, what Cowboys player? Oh, I oh, thought you were talking you women. Oh. Oh, Guys my, don't have outfits. I know. God. I said that. Steve Dennis once said said to me something about an outfit, and I said I said that same thing. Women wear outfits. Yeah. Men don't wear outfits. But we who had outfits. the best coat? Oh, Rico Gathers had a. I I kind of don't know what he was doing with his. He had a like a kind of a. I don't know. It was like an animal print. Yeah, I like a that like a weird. sweater that that was really wasn't festive. But if we were, <laughs> you know, we were hanging out like at the zoo, you know, it was kind of like. But he kind of had a big animal print thing working. Dak and Zeke, cool. Dak and Zeke, could... nice coats. Yeah. Did they? Yeah. Okay, all right. How about Layton? He looked pretty normal. He was just. Did late. you see his, his Instagram post? I my wife had that last night. All right, yeah. can you describe it? Is that a? It wolf? was. I, was it a some kind of wolf number? It, it was over like the shoulder or yes. something. Yes, with his wife. Yeah, is that uh, fake? not his wife? His girlfriend, I guess. Fiance, I believe. Maybe? Yeah, something like that. 
It, well, he said his post was the wolf and his fox. Ah, <laughs> I didn't see that. That's a great caption. He did not wear that to the party, I don't believe. Well, that. he took a picture of it, uh, and it looked like they were either at the party or going to the party. Maybe they, they were on their going, way. Yeah, he didn't have it. He, he didn't have standing, it at the. He, he was okay. standing about ten, fifteen feet from me while I was watching Emerald City, as Mickey would say. And as as the fashion police, there were four women there that had the same outfit on. <laughs> That's what Mickey was at the bar doing, and they weren't cheerleaders. They weren't yeah, all. He was the, the fashion outfit. police at the bar. Oh, sure he was. How, how often does that happen? Like you go by the same pantsuit. <laughs> That that's horrible. Bill, move this thing along. Go, yeah. Growing, growing. I'm not not just growing up, but also the father of three daughters. That's, that is that's horrifying. Oh, that is horrifying. It, it is. Yes. All right, uh, Jerry Jones on the fan this morning. Um, what's being tweeted out about Sean Lee? Did you gather anything? I was not able to listen to Jerry this morning. So someone fill me in on what he said. Go, Go ahead. ahead, Rob. Go ahead. No. I've already talked about it once. Okay. He said uh, <laughs> he anticipates Sean Lee working back as a starter, being part of a three-man rotation, I guess. You know, we leave out Damian Wilson, who does get snaps here in this defense. But with Leighton, with Jalen, he thinks it's a great problem. They'll figure out roles for all guys. And, uh, you know, he just wanted to emphasize, obviously, Sean Lee, let's not forget about the caliber of player he is when he's healthy. Uh, but they certainly don't want to rush him back, and I don't know if for sure he'll be back this week. Yeah, Sean Lee's a Philadelphia Eagle killer, though. That I'm was, sure he would love to come back for this party. Game. Yeah, did, he, did did he come back the first time for the Philly game and got hurt? I can't remember. It was a division game. It was either Washington or Philly. Um, that was that no, because it was probably it was Philly. It was Philly. Yeah, but yeah. his career, he's his he, career yeah. is he's played really well against. Now he missed. Oh, he, he missed like great he missed against the Philly. Philly. Yeah. He missed the Philly game. Yeah, though he's traditionally though he's played very well against the Philadelphia Eagles. It was Washington. He came Tur back before the bye. That's right. Turnovers. And no, he stuff came like back. That. He came back against Tennessee. He came back against Washington, played 17 snaps against Tennessee. And he came back beat. against Washington. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Not Philadelphia. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Did you say that? What? Did no. you say that? I just said that. I said he came back against Washington. <laughs> I was listening. <laughs> anyway. I heard, I heard Philadelphia. All right. <laughs> anyway. Hmm, that's what we're playing this week. Because <laughs> I think fans, I, the reason why that question was asked on the fan is that I think there's fans out there that are like, uh, no, I don't want to see Leighton. I want to see this kid grow. But, look, Sean Lee, when he's right, I think Jerry said it this morning, there's nobody better. So yeah. they got to figure out a way, and I think they will. They were doing it. They were doing Sean it before. We've talked about that. Right. But the so. argument people will say was that Leighton Van Der Esch was not playing at this high of a level before they made that, when they were doing the rotation. And is he it, wasn't. Is, so is, no, that, is that your – is that – and I'm from the school of – and people will kill me for saying this too because, you know, they'll say, well, why didn't they do this for Romo? Why didn't Romo get his job back when he was injured, you know, and came? Why, why is, why is uh, Sean Lee all of a sudden getting his job back and Tony Romo didn't get his job back? But that's just uh, – that's for a whole other another day, another story. But it's different in that with, uh, with linebackers, you can play both of them throughout yeah. the course of a game. No question. And with a quarterback, you can't unless you want to do what the Cowboys did in 1971 and alternate that's, on plays. That, that they, and that, mm. what they do the next week? They, and then they the went, next they, week they went with Staubach. They and took an 10 L, weeks right? later, in they Chicago, won the Chicago, I believe. Did they lose that game they, in Chicago? They, they lost that game yeah. in the quarterback shuttle 23-19 yeah. uh, to, 19 to the that. Bears. Yeah. And then they shuffled that out the yeah, door. Exactly. And then Staubach, was, the rest is history. Uh, you know what? I, I think that, like I said, I, I, I understand the argument about Van Der Esch not playing at the, the level that he's playing now when they were rotating I get that but I also I also know the type of playmaker that Sean Lee is I know the instinctual player that he is what he brings sure there's a possibility of him getting hurt we've seen this before but I, I want Sean Lee on this field I do and if you could find a way to get Van Der Esch Jalen Smith, I mean there's things they can do they can use Jalen Smith as a rusher they could play three-man line there's different packages they can get into we've seen it a allow, little bit allow this to happen yeah this is not going to be one guy just completely standing over there for 15 snaps who brought up Bill did you bring that up the long touchdown drive that yeah Tennessee the long had. touchdown drive Jay, they, they, yeah Van Der Esch the Tennessee was on the field. game yeah Sean yeah. Lee was on the off the field for 14 plays 14 and the only time he came back 
on the and that was his second the, the goal, consecutive the goal line play. Yeah, right. But that was the second consecutive possession yeah. that Sean Lee was not on the field. Van Der Esch was on. Sean Lee started that game. Right. Then he was off the field for uh, one possession, and then the long possession. It was all Van Der Esch on the field until the goal line play. Right. At the end. And let's be honest. When he does come back, whether it's this week or the week after, maybe. I don't think they're going to want to throw him out for 60 snaps anyway. No, they're not going to do that. They're going to try to manage him to get him what they hope to the playoffs and have him ready for postseason, I would think. Now, they have a luxury now. They have a rookie who's playing at a Pro Bowl level, and Jalen Smith is playing at a, I think both guys deserve Pro Bowl votes for what they've done this year. It's 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 a And this is nothing against Anthony Hitchens, who did a good job when he was here, but this is a, a deep group unlike we've seen in years around here i think people overreacted to the starting part like if you mm -hmm. start you're yeah. gonna play all yeah. 60 plays that's yeah and they're gonna go back because if you think about it when when sean um right there when he started getting hurt they were starting to use van Der Esch a little bit at middle linebacker too right and, and so it was a three person share of two and i think if you can get back to that that's fine and you don't wear anybody else out yeah. It's not like they're benching the guy, you know, and it's, I mean, please. If we'd seen Sean Lee's skills just completely erode, yeah, then, then, it's, a different then, then it's a different story. This is a guy that still can play at a high level. The problem with Sean Lee, as we all know, is he can't stay healthy. And if Sean Lee stays healthy, well, how much does Leighton Van? I mean, they still probably rotate, but it's. Sean Lee and Jalen Smith playing primarily with Leighton Vander Esch coming off the bench. And maybe they just delay Sean since they're going to end up playing 20 games and he can mm -hmm. be ready for those last four. Mm -hmm. That's right. They're Back not going to rush it. Of the year. Especially since this is I don't think the they've rushed time. it at all. No, I don't no, think no. they've rushed it. I don't think they've rushed it at all with no. him. I think they've allowed him to get as healthy as he can. And, you know, you're going to need him on the field. This guy, you, you, you know, you, you talk about making plays. You know, with those those key plays, third and five, you know, fourth and two, whatever. This guy makes those plays. You know, Vanderish does too. Vanderish has done this for a handful of games. Sean Lee's done this for a, a number of years. Let's not forget that either out there, Cowboy Nation. And I think if we follow their history of guys coming back from injury, it's not like they miss how many he's missed four games? Five games? I mean, now in a row. Um well, if you yes, count, they're on a four-game winning streak. Yeah, he's missed yeah. all the games they've won. Four, right? It happened in the Tennessee game, so right. after that. Yes. the exact opposite of last year. They lost every time he yeah. could play yeah. last year. Yeah. Now right. they right. win every That's time. And so, <laughs> and so normally when a guy's missed that much time, they get back into practice very limited, mm -hmm. and then they start they play the next week. Right. So I'm thinking maybe this week Indianapolis, a little bit of something, and then is ready the following. Just listening to the answers, it didn't sound like – uh, it was a sure thing that he's coming back after the long layoff. He had a pretty good game in Indianapolis eight years ago. Uh, yes, yeah, he did. Real good game, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What about uh, – talking about injuries and stuff, did did Jerry mention anything about Tavon Austin? That question didn't come up to him. Okay. And I, my, my thinking is he's getting close. Okay, if Tavon Austin is close, what's the status of Cole Beasley? That's another one we God, need that's to think about. That's this week. another one we need yeah. to think about. Because if you don't have Cole Beasley, you're going to have to figure out is it Alan Hearns or Cooper in the slot? Mm -hmm. That's your next trick to have to figure out how you're going to play that. Because as much 11 personnel as they play. And both guys have done it. Can, and you can want, do and it. Trust me, you want to put as many damn receivers on this field against Philadelphia as you can. Beasley, Beasley finished the game, didn't he? Yeah. Okay. He, he but did finish. But, with so he's probably not. He's had a lot of time off now, and we're going to not probably not practice him, right? Well, he heard it on the key third down conversion. Yeah, when he, when he late. leaned, when he when he went for the dive. Yeah, yeah. that's like, made the Saints start having to use their timeouts. Right. Um. So yeah, that's always encouraging. That he was able to basically finish the game. We'll have to see. We'll have to see when they get back to work. I, I just don't know. I mean, like you say, if he can't play, you're going to have to figure out how to work around. And that's what I'm saying. Okay. And I'm also thinking about Tavon Austin. I need something for my special teams. Yeah. I'm going to need something for my punt return here, guys. I'm tired of this thing going for five, six yards. You know, and I know people. You're starting to get stops. You know, if you could find something that way to take advantage of that. You know, if you could change the flip the field with some guys. You know? Beasley, hey, I love you, but you know, as a receiver, I don't really love you as a punt returner. They need to do something special teams-wise to kind of. These games are getting too tight, too close, too tough 
need to flip the field a couple of different times. That's why I was asking about Beasley. I mean, asking about Austin in the slot, but I was also asking about Austin, you know, maybe take Lance Lenore off the field and put, you know, and I think that's what's going to happen. Lance Lenore is going to go back to being inactive and then they're going to put, you know, yeah, hopefully, you know, but they need something in the return game here. They're just not getting it. They're making people punt. You know, all the football I watched over the weekend, I, it reaffirms my philosophy on punt returns. Just everybody stand there, do nothing, and call for a fair catch. Which is basically what a lot of college teams are doing on kickoffs now, too, because you can now fair catch inside, inside the, the 18-yard the line. There's a penalty yeah. on every and punt so, return. Yeah. Like Texas, they put little Jordan Humphrey back there because he's their best receiver, or he and Colin Johnson. And so his assignment is just to catch the football, and then they take it at the 25-yard line. Yeah. So Do not try to block anybody. And yeah, because there's so many penalties. You're going to – from where you catch the ball odds are even if you have a good return odds are you're going to start at your own 10 yard line because of the penalties i, I don't know i just but. kind of feel like it's still a play a part no, of the game. I agree. and, no, and I, you know and, and and if you know can this offense go 80 yards i think it has I think its offense has shown the ability now to well, at least drive the but, ball a little bit. But that's bit. to your point. If you have a punt returner yeah, or I mean, a kick returner, well, then I'm just, great. I'm Use just them, saying, yeah, I'm just saying. If you don't it, have someone. It, it, it's, I just go back to the, the great experience that I had with Desmond Howard and how that worked late in the year at Green Bay. Super Bowl? All the, yeah, <laughs> the Super Bowl. Yeah, but it, it worked because all of a sudden – Guys were getting blocks. Guys weren't holding. Guy, you know, Desmond Howard was averaging 15, 16 yards. Think about the Cowboys having to get one less first down. It's, it's a drive. It's essentially another chunk play. If you can get a 15, 20 yes. yard return. But Mickey's yeah. right. You I mean every time you look up, you know, Byron Jones gets called for holding or Frazier gets block hits for a block in the back or something like that. But if you have a dynamic returner that already has got the ball up the field. Maybe you don't have to hold blocks. Maybe you don't have to hit guys in the back. That's what. And the Cowboys have one of those. Yeah. That would be Tavon. Yeah. I mean, I just need an explosive play in the kicking game. Actually, other than you, roughing the kicker. Actually, what you need <laughs> is two guys outside on the edge that can hold up the gunners. That's why they have they've those got, corners out got there. No chance yeah. when those guys come running down full speed and they don't get blocked. Yeah. That that negates your returner. I don't care who's back there. That's four minutes of. Punt return talk. There was. And yes. We're just getting Only started here on, on Talking Eagles Cowboys. Week of Talking Cowboys. And I don't know if you can see this through my dirty iPad here, but Leighton Van Der Esch last night with oh, his. Oh, there it is. Can Look you see there. it there? There you go. Leighton Van Der Esch. There's what he was wearing. We just lost PETA as There's... one of our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> and Talking Cowboys continues with your phone calls in just a moment. Essilor has been helping Cowboys fans see better since 1972 so they don't miss a moment on the field. Get glasses with Essilor's best vision, clarity, and protection with the Essilor Ultimate Lens Package. Three innovative technologies in one lens. For a limited time, you can double your lenses for free when you purchase the Essilor Ultimate Lens Package and get a second pair of frames. Find a participating eye care professional and details by visiting EssilorUSA.com. That's EssilorUSA.com. Terms and conditions apply. If you're like me and you love... I mean, if you have a thing, then cutting the cord is scary. But then I found out I could switch to DirecTV now and still get the live sports I love. No satellite needed, no bulky hardware, no annual contract. Just get the live sports you love. Try DirecTV now for $10 a month for three months. Visit DirecTVNow.com. DirecTV Now. More for your thing. That's our thing. Use code Real Deal. Limited time. Price for a little, little package. After three months, we use monthly at full price. Currently minimum $40 unless canceled. Prices may change. New subscribers only. Cancel any time. Content varies by package and may be limited. Restrictions apply. A man's Stetson doesn't just protect him from life's elements. It projects an unstoppable and legendary spirit, just like the men wearing silver and navy on the field every Sunday. Since 1865, Stetson hats are a American made with pride right here in Texas. They are still the official crown of all self-respecting Cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find Stetson hats in the pro shop or at Stetson.com today. Dr. Pepper is the one you crave. But how do you explain that craving? Imagine being shipwrecked on a desert island alone. Glass-like curls of surf pound the shore with Dr. Pepper-colored waves. Surrounded by desire, but you can't drink it because it's the ocean. The fish live in there. The only thing you want is Dr. Pepper, and you can't have it. Now that is a Dr. Pepper craving. Dr. Pepper, the one you crave. Back 
to Talking Cowboys. All right, fellas, it's crunch time, right? Last month of the season, crunch time's when you got to stay cool. Nobody's better at keeping you cool under pressure than Tommy John. Tommy John underwear has moisture wicking, antimicrobial fabrics to keep germs What's and that? perspiration yes. at bay. I'm not going to read it twice. What is the word? That means no discomfort and no adjustment. Tommy John, no adjustment needed. Shop exclusive Cowboys underwear at TommyJohn.com forward slash Cowboys for 20% off your first Microbial? Order. Moisture wicking, antimicrobial Anti. Anti fabrics. Yeah. Need him yes. On, Nicky need him on the dance floor. Anti microbial. Was, was he on the dance floor no, last he was, night? He was, he was hovering Protus around. Protus was just making stuff up. <laughs> he should have gone. He was hovering gone. around. He had like a cup of potatoes and he was just kind of watching. <laughs> There we go. Just kind of, just kind of gently. Did he have, his, did he have yeah. his disco jacket on yeah, from the seven? You know, he thought he was at some club in Chicago back in the day. <laughs> Somebody asked me, "Do you ever go out there on the dance floor?" And I said, "Yeah, several years ago, yeah. I think I made the mistake of going out there." Yeah. <laughs> Studio Fifty Four style. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The shirt with the collar all the Did way to the edge. Travolta. What's your uh, alive, dance? Alive. Dance all three yeah. you guys into the ground. What's your okay? go-to move on the dance floor? Go to move. He's a twirler. What is that? <laughs> Square dancing. What's a go to move? Go to move. Yeah, like. You do the floss? You know I mean, what, what I, do you do? No, Up close so, and personal. You know what I wanted to do? Mickey and I, we should have done this, Mickey. We should have learned how to do the kid and play dance, you know, where they, they <laughs> kick feet and hook up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, are, are I would, out I would give up them. a paycheck to see y'all learn that and do that. Mickey, there's this great dance. What, about you know, dance what movie line. is it from? House Party? The yeah. dance line? Yeah. House Party has this great... It's not what I'm talking about. Go to YouTube and look up House Party. And kid play. And they do this thing where they kick their feet, and they interlock, and then they kind of go around. It's, and then, yeah. yeah, It's a really cool way of dancing. If you only had one dance to do... <laughs> if I said, Brian, you have to just do one dance, that, that's the one I want to learn. You looking at it right now, Bill? No, no, I'm not. No, okay. I'm not. Well, you need to look uh, at that. Got Kid pictures of line dancing last <laughs> night. <laughs> there was that last night too. Yeah, there was a line dance last night. At least no one fell on the drums this time. Ooh. Hmm. 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 So, Counting. how long did this party go till? <laughs> Until they kick Mickey out. <laughs> I, I he was standing at the food was, truck at the end going, I got, my, got cheesy, my cheesy cheese sandwich. There we go. I told you. <laughs> he was the last one out. No, I was not. It was still going. Oh, was it? Oh, was it? Well, you, the what young, time young kids don't show up till 1030 or 11. Oh, yeah. Right? Like our, those team, young, our team? Those kids. Our team? Yeah. 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 The entire <laughs> team showed our team up at about show up. I was 10 or 1030. Yeah. When you're in college, you go out at like 10. Right. That's right. So, yeah, yeah same thing. Save money. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you got to do. Same thing. All right, Rob. you got hair, you got like dog hair all over you. <laughs> I just I keep staring at I it. I was waiting for. He's been hanging out. Look like Van Der Esch. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I do have dog hair. You know why? Because I had to take my beagle Romo to the vet this morning. Romo, the you beagle. had to carry Romo. Romo. I had to carry Romo. Oh no, oh, no. Romo is having difficulties. Oh, I'm sorry. A couple of days. Oh jeez. Going to bring a tear to my eye here. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm expecting a text. Soon. Not a good phone call. Huh? I think it's like a transverse process issue. Oh no. That was a joke, but <laughs> trend. Oh, <laughs> just got it. <laughs> just got it. It took such a serious tone. And yeah. Then, and then, like, oh, <laughs> Romo's got a collarbone problem. Man. <laughs> That's good. That's there good. is another Romo at a. Was it the transverse process yeah. issue gotcha. in his back? Yeah, and that's right. That's, he's kind of having those same issues. He was fine on Saturday. He was out playing in the yard. You know, he was scrambling around. He'll be all right. Throwing dog his, talk. Throw into his open retriever. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. oh, the dad joke's back. <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> Poor people were just turning us off right now. That's <laughs> okay. So, anyway, prayers up for Robo right yeah. now. Yes. Okay. Got a broadcast. Yeah, he, he, uh, he does. Westminster he's Dog not, Show. <laughs> it's my fourth <laughs> He's not ready to start that broadcasting He's career. He's at the yet. Westminster Dog Show. <laughs> Sideline reporter. <laughs> I talked to the collie today. <laughs> he thinks the chow has a chance. <laughs> you know, I think he does have a future. He's got great lungs. I mean, you, my neighbors get a test. He is very vocal. Okay. I'm like so. Mark, huh? Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. I think it might have been that new dog that the neighbor got. He likes to run the fence With the and blue everything. Lights. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Blue <laughs> light right. neighbor. That's right. All right. 
dog Cliff, <laughs> Averill. Yeah. Um, anyway. Oh, it's been a while since we've done this show. Huh? Tyron Smith. Get an update on him this morning <laughs> oh, from Jerry I, Jones. I, you think he'll start because they've been winning without him. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that. Yeah. Oh. Get an update. I, I think he's good to go. Jerry, what, no, what did Jerry say? I think Jerry hinted that he was good to okay. go. Dr. Jones says thumbs All up. All right. So he asked about David Irving. Yeah, he's still got a high ankle sprain. Okay. That was really diplomatically well played, yes. Nikki. Yes, yeah. Well, that's what Jerry said. No, he's, yeah, yeah he said he's, it's, a, it's a tough one to come back from. That's what he said, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everything's tough to come back from when you're David Irving. Okay, so that was it from from Jerry Jones this morning. Yeah. Basically. Yes. All right, we're, we're updated on Jerry Jones. All right, you can give us a call at 888-855-2297. And as I mentioned that, Jim in Pasadena is on the line, home of the Rose Bowl, Ohio State in Washington. Jim, how you doing? Good morning, Bill. How you guys all Great. doing? Good. Good. You're having a lot of fun this morning until you brought up David Irvin. Yeah, exactly. So you brought up Ohio State. Did they get shafted? As the consolation <laughs> for them was the Rose Bowl. No, I don't know. It's a nah, good, no, no, great, great place debate. to be. Yeah, yep. Rose Bowl's a great bowl. Hey, uh, I looked at some tape on the game and check this out. I, I counted 15 completed passes, and 13 of them, the first defender to the ball made the tackle, and that is phenomenal. Giving up only about 11 yards to the second defender getting to the ball. That's that's just great tackling. And then on the run, 17 runs and 16 times, first defender made the tackle. Yeah. There was one time on the sweep he didn't, and we gave up an extra yard. Yeah. That's just great job of tackling the fundamentals. Um, Sean Lee in the linebacker conundrum, I just feel like the only way that goes south is if we get too cute. And we don't let those backers get into the speed of the game and the flow of the play calling. And we kind of outthink it. You know, Anthony Brown and Jordan Lewis are playing well. I'd hate to take them off the field. Uh, So what do you do? A three-man rush? Yeah. Um, You know, who knows? What what are your thoughts on that? Well, can I ask you this? Thanks for taking my call. Quick, quick, quick. Hey. Beautiful in Pasadena, folks. (laughs) Hello, you're there with me. You're with me. Hello. Is this a recording? It's only got a it's got a speaker. It doesn't have it here. Yeah. We lost him. I was going to ask. I think no, he's, he's gone. gone. What's that? No. no. Welcome back. Brian, Brian had, a had a question for you. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Brian. I'm no sorry. problem. Tell me too cute. Give me too cute. So What's... you can get too cute and you start seven and you get caught with twelve on the field or. You know, a linebacker gets into the flow of the game. He just in, innately understands what plays coming next. He's in a groove and the speed of the game, and he's seeing things clearly. But we get too cute and say, well, Lee's got to be on the field or Smith's got to be on the field and, and just have a very specific role and don't just put those three players out there for the sake of having those three players out there. I mean, Lewis is in a groove. Brown is playing well. Don't – it just – there may not be an opportunity to have Lee out there. I'm just, I'm just thinking, uh, so, spitballing but, here, and so don't force him no, to be out. No, my man, you, but you're telling me how great they tackled Sean Lee, a pretty damn good tackler, huh? But he wasn't in the stat sheet I just gave you. No, but but I'm just saying though. Okay, but, let's he, has, talk, yeah, but he has been for nine. Let's years. Let's talk about his career then, okay? It, it, no, 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 guys. I'm not. I think I'm you're not over. Saying, you're yeah, you're, you're, you're the, the, a Sean Lee fan. No, no you're over thinking. That. I think you're getting cute here. Yeah, you're getting cute ball. by... No, you, get, you don't switch them by play. Yeah. You do it by series. You don't have guys running in and out yeah. every play. Good point. Yeah. And, Good point. and the I, other I, thing I, that you pointed out about Jordan Lewis, do you realize how many plays he played in that game? Probably four. Eight. 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 You're yeah. halfway home. So You're okay. Yeah. So it you're wasn't watching, like so that's good. you're taking him off the field to put a linebacker on there. Yeah. This was a significant situation yeah. where when they were in third and long and right. you wanted your dime out there and only one linebacker because of who? Number 41, Elvin Kamara. Yeah. Needed yeah. somebody yeah. to run with him. You better figure out who to cover that tight end with. That's going to be your yes. trick this week. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you better figure Absolutely. that one out real fast. And get ready for that toss sweep coming down your throat, too. Yep. You know? And I thought Jeff Heath did a great job this past week just setting the edge and yeah. just being uh, yeah. just stout yeah. against the toss sweep this yeah. past you week. Better, yeah, you job. better get ready for that. That's the one thing that looks like that people are going to start trying to do. You know? Yeah. 
So anyway, okay. Yeah. Thanks for your thanks for your call. Thank you guys. It's All a right. good it's a good thought, but we've we talked about. I just this. didn't know what cute was. No, and, I was and, trying to learn what cute. Was. I I hear his point, but we this goes back to Carolina. Sean would take a series off, and they I mean they do it with Zeke. I mean right. they'll they'll put Rod Smith in the third series of a half or Boy, whatever it is. Like shake their head about that. Mm. Yeah, I know. I don't but, want a series. Yeah, for Zeke. Yes. Yeah, I, I get it. Man, he was limping in that game. I think, I, I think nobody I think, nobody needed this long weekend more than Ezekiel Elliott. How many games opinion. did he play in a row there? That I mean, he was in incredible numbers, and it was like what in all what twelve days, basically yeah. three games, three games, three eleven games. days. Yeah. You can't do that to a running back, and not in this day and age. Five yeah. games in twenty five days. Yeah, yeah. throughout think the about month of November. Yeah, I, no, you're right, Rob. No, nobody needed this break more than him. I counted it up. But Rod Smith's got to play better, doesn't he? What, what's happened to Rod Smith? Rod Smith in preseason games yeah. looked like, oh, let's get Rod Smith some more touches. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's because he hasn't got that many touches and he hadn't got into a groove. You know, maybe we're getting cute. As, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good, you know. You know but you, you realize I mean, you got to give Zeke a breather sometimes. Yeah, but, but Rod Smith got to play better, yeah. hasn't he? In four games, Zeke has had 115 touches. Four games. Yeah. Four games. Yeah, think about that. 91 runs, 24 receptions. Yeah. And then not to mention the pass blocking stuff he's had to also do, too. I mean, it's collisions, things he's had to deal with. I don't know. I mean, I just – I wish there was some way to say, okay, when you, I wish you could feel better about taking Zeke off the field. You know, I was critical of the Redskins for not having a – Back up third, quarterback. third quarterback, yeah. you know, even someone on the practice squad. I mean, you look at the Cowboys, and as much as the Cowboys depend on the running game and on Zeke, right. to only have Rod Smith as your backup, it's right. uh, pretty remarkable. Well, they 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 could use Olawale as a single right. back runner, right. but but he's okay. Not, I mean, I'm, I'm talking that. a true no. Back, I, I'm you know? with yeah. you on that. Right, I, but it, it's a numbers game as far as the roster. They're able to go long at wide receiver, whatever. Right. You know, not having that third running back see here's the problem with it is when and, and if you put rod smith in you're immediately thinking okay they're throwing the ball here. right and so they're kind of forced to hand him the ball just to respect the run when he's in sort of like with noah brown yeah before when he was in at wide yeah. receiver it's like oh they're running the ball he's right. in the block well you you got to throw him the ball every once yeah. in a while to hey, take I'm, that away. I'm not against that at all by the way. And it's starting to work. Yeah. I, and yeah. I've been the biggest critic of him being on the field He's got about 20 snaps these last couple games. I think like so. Yeah. <clears throat> but before all he was doing was blocking. That's so right. you might as well no, no. put a big blinking light out there yeah. run. Yeah. yeah. Used you know? to be what they did when Devin Street was here. If Devin Street was in the game, it was a, it was a handoff. It seemed like every single time they weren't throwing them. Yeah, ball. yeah. So when so if you put Rod Smith in, you know it's almost like okay, they're they're they're, they're throwing the ball. Just, they just want him to block. I just keep saying, I wish it was better. I wish it was a better, you know, because there's plays. I mean, they get in a little groove running the ball, and you know, it seems like that Rod Smith doesn't just he hasn't shown that power. They showed the preseason. Remember those games they playing like Cincinnati, Arizona, and he's like running over people. And, yep. You know, he's gaining an extra three or four yards after contact. And I'm thinking, all right, they, they, they've got – now you can you can do this and be okay. And he's just kind of played – he's played soft. And I – that's – you know, it's hard to – that shouldn't say that about an NFL player because it's tough enough as it is. But, boy, I expected so much more. Maybe, you know, maybe he'll have one of those games. Like, how about him last year against the Giants? You know, at the end of that, in the way – I mean, he, he – Terrific, yeah. He was just an incredible player. And you're thinking, all right, they got him a legitimate backup guy. That if they take, you know, we were all thinking, uh, you know, when they, when they were taking Zeke off the field, we we're like, oh, this is just going to be, you know, you know, with, you know, Alfred Moore, Alfred Morris was, he was good, but I was thinking so much more for Rod Smith. Well, Rod had earned snaps over him in some instances. He put him on the street, year. basically, yeah. did yeah. he? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I was just looking up uh, Rod Smith last year, his game log. The Giants yeah. one was incredible. The Giants game will give you the hope that he was giving you the hope. And then he had the good preseason. You know, and well, he got an opportunity last year. Of course, it was during the Zeke suspension is when yeah. he really got the opportunity. Sure. But he did get an opportunity in the blowout win over San Francisco, where he had eight eight runs for sixty one yards, seven point yeah. six a carry. Yeah, that got him into you know, maybe build his confidence, got him into a groove a little bit, and that right. that's kind of what I'm talking about. He's never had that opportunity this year where you give him the ball, give him a ball a few times, he, he, and maybe that's what 
a running back needs to get. But he got yeah. that in the preseason. You guys so. watched enough football to know Rod Smith does not look right. like the he's same not, player. And right. I'll be. I'll be. I'll admit it. And I don't I know mean, if it's a confidence thing where he's not hitting the hole. It's like they hand him the ball and he kind of goes sideways. You know. I mean. I, I just there was a there was a downhill player in that body. I know there was a downhill player yep. in that body. Yep. But well, he gets at, hit, he gets in, that's minus one. Okay. He's like, he's picking and choosing. I mean, the guy that can pick and choose the way he hits the hole is Zeke. Zeke has got the ability to finish forward. You know, Rod Smith, you got to show me you can finish forward. Let's look at, okay, here were his games last year and during the suspension. Okay. Three carries, 14 yards against Atlanta. Yeah. Eight carries, 11 yards against Philadelphia. He went nine for 41, which is good against the Chargers. Right. 10 for 27 against the Redskins. Not good. That game you're talking about, the Giants, he went 6 for 47. Right. And then he was 7 for 13 against Oakland and 2 for 10 against Seattle. Yeah. So You know what they need? And they don't have it. A fullback? They need, no, they need <laughs> that Lance Dunbar player. And I don't know if it's Tavon Austin, but I – and the only reason I thought of this is, did you guys watch the Chargers on Sunday? A little bit. No. A little bit. The little running back from yeah. Northwestern. Yeah. No, no. Jo is it Clint Johnson? What what the heck's that guy's name? It was number 32, I think. Yeah. He was – Change of pace guy. Oh, he was hitting the whole – Justin Jackson? Uh, maybe that's it. Uh, from Northwestern. And, and, and he could scoot. And, yeah. and they couldn't keep up with his pace and, and probably had his best game uh, as a pro. They've tried forever to get that guy, though. I know. They? I know. That's been one of those. Oh, we're going to keep Lance Dunbar around. Oh, we're going to. And then he, you know, his history is almost as bad as Sean Lee's. Yeah. You know, I mean, every time you want to sit there and be happy, you're like, oh god, this guy, he's going to. And then it's something happens, and now you're, you know, you were, you were, you're being held hostage. I mean, that. just in watching last night with Sproles yeah. back on yeah. the field for Philadelphia. Yeah. Lance yep. Dunbar's available. <laughs> <laughs> he actually worked out. He did. Yeah, he worked, yeah. worked out earlier back in the year. The, yeah, a few months ago, right? Yeah. yeah. But, and it is Justin Jackson. Justin yeah. Jackson. Out of Northwestern. Okay. I yep. said Johnson. And, of course, with Melvin Gordon out, then he got his opportunity yeah. uh, for the Chargers. Who, All right. Wait, wait. Oh, somebody, real quick. Somebody picked the Chargers in the playoffs. Was it you? When we did yeah, our whole sure. big – Yeah, it was me. I thought no, somebody peer picked the Chargers. I can't remember. Okay. Yeah, it was me. I, I tried to I tried to forget I knew my, my picks as I soon as I made them. Although I did pick the Cowboys to go eleven and five. Hmm. Hmm. What are they now? They're seven and five. They got four games left. Got a chance. Right. Got still a chance. alive. Still back, alive. Back to that Staying twelve alive. game winning this is, streak. This is from Mickey's disco days. That's right. Staying, Staying alive. alive. Staying alive. Yeah. Um, um, Oh, oh, staying alive. Get the, <laughs> get, get, the, the that kid. get the ball spitting up in the ceiling. <laughs> My God. All right. We you never have take more of your phone had calls. More I've, fun. I've never on felt so young. Cowboys. Yep. If you're like me and you love, I mean, if you have a Hi. thing, then cutting the cord is scary. But then I found out I could switch to DirecTV now and still get the live sports I love. No satellite needed, no bulky hardware, no annual contract, just... Get the live sports you love. Try DirecTV now for $10 a month for three months. Visit DirecTVnow.com. DirecTV Now. More for your thing. That's our thing. Use code REALDEAL. Limited time. Price for a little, little package. After three months, we use monthly at full price. Currently minimum $40 unless canceled. Prices may change. New subscribers only. Cancel any time. Content varies by package and may be limited. Restrictions apply. It's time for tailgating with the OtterBox boys. The OtterBox that builds those crazy protective phone cases? Yup. And now they're changing the side dish game with the OtterBox Trooper Soft Cooler. Lightweight, mobile, and leak-proof. Trooper is perfect for blitzing a crowded parking lot with a Frito pie. Amazing. Hey, you think I could fit my seven-layer salmon salad into the Trooper cooler? Yep, but please don't. And that's been Tailgating with the OtterBox Boys. Learn more about the Trooper soft coolers at OtterBox.com. While a player could look good on paper, it's when he's out on the field that you really find out what he's made of. That's why the Cowboys rely on more than just stats and scouting reports when building their team. When picking a tractor, it's why you should rely on more than just specs and features. You've got to take it out and put it to the test. The Cowboys did when they named John Deere their official tractor. Experience one for yourself. Visit myjohndeeredealer.com slash football. It can be hard to find the right resource for learning about important financial matters. You search how to build savings, you end up reading about the one weird ingredient from supermarkets that can make you taller. That's why Bank of America built BetterMoneyHabits.com, a safe little corner of the Internet for answering your financial questions. 
Full of simple videos and tips, Better Money Habits can show you how to make the most of your money without resorting to random searches that always seem to lead to unbelievable photos of childhood stars grown up. To learn more, visit BetterMoneyHabits.com. Essilor has been helping Cowboys fans see better since 1972 so they don't miss a moment on the field. Get glasses with Essilor's best vision, clarity, and protection with the Essilor Ultimate Lens Package. Three innovative technologies in one lens. For a limited time, you can double your lenses for free when you purchase the Essilor Ultimate Lens Package and get a second pair of frames. Find a participating eye care professional and details by visiting EssilorUSA.com. That's EssilorUSA.com. Terms and conditions apply. Back to Talking Cowboys. Oh, we're supposed to do a Jack Black read right now, <laughs> yeah. right? Do you know what the pros use? Jack they Black. use Jack Black, the men's skincare <laughs> provider of the Dallas Cowboys. I need to know <laughs> think of this now. And you can get those JB faves, four of Jack Black's favorite products. For 10 bucks, free shipping at getjackblack.com. Very good, Vicky. <laughs> what was that, what was that dramatic? Else say, oh, let me jump in and <laughs> well, do what this. What was that dramatic pause we had there? I couldn't think of the word. I <laughs> microbial? No, no. I can't even say no it. No microbial. <laughs> All right. You got it together. Jack Black. It was. Get it, it was. for the holidays. That and Tommy John. Yes. Yes. Get a boat. Get a boat. And how about getting some boxing tickets Whoa. for your significant yes. other for Christmas? <laughs> sure. IBF welterweight champion Errol Spence Jr. from Dallas right here. Own. Yeah, Dallas's own. Set to defend his title against four division world champion, current WBC lightweight champion Mikey Garcia, March 16th at AT&T Stadium. You won't want to miss this highly anticipated blockbuster showdown. Tickets on sale now at SeatGeek.com, the official ticket provider of AT&T Stadium. Fox. Are they guaranteeing me more than one round this time? Is that all the Did last you, one went? Yeah, Spin. here. Yeah. Yeah. Knocked him out right at the end. Yeah. And the well, bell. if it's your boxer that knocks him out in the first yeah, round, but I want it's worth your price this is, uh, this is a big, this is no, a bigger this is challenge. A big, this yeah. is a bigger yeah. fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fighting it's a me. Four last division time. world. <laughs> <laughs> he knocked the guy down yeah. like with eight seconds to go. There in you the go, first man. Round It'd and, been earlier uh, than that if it was me. <laughs> the bell didn't save him. Yeah. <laughs> And I need to double up on these reads this because I forgot last segment. A registration for holiday youth camps now open. One day go. camps available for both Dallas Cowboys Football Academy and Dallas Cowboys Cheerleaders Dance Academy at the Star. Spots are limited. Register today at DallasCowboys.com slash Academy. Back to the phone lines we go. You want to do that? Go ahead. Or sure. unless you got something else. Mm. Let's go to Salt Lake City. Let's go to Johnny in Salt Lake City. You're on Talking Cowboys. Hey, guys, how you doing? If I don't get a chance to talk to you guys again, uh, happy holidays. Thank you. you um, thanks. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to ask you guys, the identity of this football team is defense and running the game, running the ball. I mean, that's what I gather by how we play. But every time we get into the red zone, it feels like we just lose ourselves. Can you guys explain or at least tell me what you guys see that they're doing that they keep, I guess, for lack of a better way to put it, choking on the red zone or inside when they get in the five? To me, if – if you get inside the five yard line, run it. You got Zeke, you got those offensive linemen, you got Zach Martin that you just paid handsomely. I just don't get it. Every single time I get in the red zone, I get that feeling of angst. Like I, I don't know if they're gonna make it. Oh, I can, yeah. I have I have a feeling that they can drive the football down the field. But once they get there as a fan, I'm just I'm nervous and I just wanted to see if you guys had any insight on what's going on there. Thanks. Well, you should be because I'm nervous too. Uh, they're four for nine inside yeah. the ten on goal to goal situations yep. in good. these last games, yeah. and it's not good. And I, I hope they don't ever get into first and goal at the four again because they're like zero for three from there. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, to me, I, I, I'm all for trying to run it in there. I, I really am, and and I and I'm one of these guys who say, please don't get cute. And don't, you know, they, they, they do some cute things every once in a while. They have had a chance to score on some cute plays. But it just, you know, the Noah Brown play where Zach, uh, Dak kept backing up and didn't get the ball to him. But Beasley wide, Beasley open. wide open on a drop. Drops. Yeah, that – I just – you know, uh, you talk about execution, and it's so critical down in that area. One guy misses a block. 
You know, you get a tight end that misses a point of attack block. You get a backside tackle that doesn't get a cutoff. You let a run through guy happen. You drop a ball in the flat. You don't get the ball to the guy on the drag underneath. These are all things that have been big problems for them, though. I, I, I would like to see them physically try and do what they used to do, and that's just run the ball. I mean, you know, and, and Nate, watching the game with Nate, Nate is the best. Nate's like, he goes, I, don't throw it. The first thing he said, don't throw it. And, you know, and sure enough, then you see, and, and, and it's, it kind of sets you back. And they've had some problems with a little bit of protection down in that area, too, which has been, you know, I mean, but they've had protection problems overall when it comes to, you know, and, and especially when it gets crowded down there, you know, it seems like the receivers haven't helped. You know, this is where, this is where I would say you do miss a guy like Jason Witten. This is where Jason Witten. That's exactly what my question is going to be. Yeah, this is where Jason Witten would find space, would know how to get open, would slide. You can get him the football. They just don't have that guy that's the, that glass eater down there. I use that term a lot, but that's a tough guy that can find space, make a play with people on his back. They don't have that guy down there. So running the football to me is the best option, but they, they're still in search of trying to, to replace Witten down there, and they don't have a – you know, they, I think that I think Amari Cooper could be a guy that can, you know, Beasley, I think, but we well, haven't seen it yet. They had Beasley wide open for a touchdown right down there. I think yeah. it was Atlanta. He just dropped it. Yeah. Uh, you know, and some of that's just execution. Uh, but yeah, if you if you told me that they would have the same struggles in the red zone against the Saints and win the game and win the game pretty decisively, I I I, I wouldn't have believed you. Now yeah. that also credits your defense for getting a fourth down stop down there too against New Orleans as well. But, you know, in Philly right now, they're saying the same thing, I guarantee you, because they twice they were in the red zone last night, no points. I think Wentz threw a pick. Yeah. And, boy, and they, they got, got booed. Stopped. They, they got, got booed on, on that fourth down. fourth down. Yeah, trying to run on fourth down and getting stopped behind the line of scrimmage. So, Eagles having the same issues. Uh, the problem is, is the defense knows exactly what the caller knows. Oh, they're going to run the ball. Yeah. So, they load the box. And 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 when you only have to defend four yards, you can get pretty close to the line of scrimmage with everybody. They don't have they they haven't figured out how to loosen that up. Now you can try and run about it. You said, oh, well, it's that offensive line. Yeah. Well, that ain't the offensive line the Cowboys had. Sure. There's no Tyron Smith out there. There's no Travis Frederick out there. Yeah. You know that's not the same offensive line. See if Phil is out there on one foot. Lel Collins still inconsistent. Yeah, but they've been running it. Yeah, with but you good got a success. Space. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not. I don't, but they, it has been a more physical group. Now, yeah, they. I, like I said, I usually don't agree with Mickey, but I agree with Mickey. No, I, this last game they had trouble controlling the the, the point of attack. They did more so than yeah. other games, and, and Suafila wasn't right. In it's that the game. tight end. It's <laughs> a, it's the tight end at the point of attack. I mean, this is where you miss James Hanna. And Jason Witten and those guys, those guys that could get those blocks at the point of attack, they just haven't got it yet with Dalton Schultz yeah. and 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 Gathers and and if you throw Jarwin in there and then and then the fullback and the fullback goes in there and he does he's not sure where he fits. You know, it's hard to simulate that stuff live in practice. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you get Olawale trying to search and find, and you've got backup linemen trying to search and find, and you got a lot of search and find going on in there, you know. So. I think they need to use the Antoine Woods up the middle. just Human like log? The, like, like the Bears, Bears did. did. Bears did. That's they, right. They brought you know, that, the other thing they the don't bridge. have is they don't seem to have a threat on the outside to throw the, the, the basically jump ball. The fade. The back shoulder fade. Yeah. You know, the quarterback do doesn't that? throw it. You know, really we got well. so tired. I think with some of us got tired of seeing, oh, that's all they did with Dez. Yeah. But it was a pretty good trick. It's a 50 50 trick. Right? They don't yeah. have that yeah. guy that can get up that high. Yeah. So Matt Nagy with Chicago, he used the Fridge Jr., yes. yeah. Akeem Hicks, uh, in for a touchdown run. He also used Tariq Cohen. He found a passer shorter than Chase Daniel to throw yeah. the time yes. touchdown yes. pass in yeah. that game. And yet in Philly last night, they're booing Doug Peterson oh, yeah. for his play calling on the goal line? Oh, yeah. Why didn't he just pull out the Philly special? I, it would have quieted them pretty quickly, wouldn't it? It would have. Yeah. I don't know because uh, that, was that guy penetrated five <laughs> yards behind the line. They, of they've had so, you talk about problems with blocking tight ends and stuff. That uh, Zach Ertz, as good as he is, you you run behind him, you're you're taking your play calling in the in the in the life of there right there for sure. I mean, they call the timeout for one. 
and they take a break and they come back and they try to hand it off and yeah. it had no chance. No chance. And boy, it pissed off the Philly faithful. Can I, <laughs> can I ask a question of the panel here? Uh, just a, a player. We talk about players and stuff. Who are you more surprised it played well, Fleming or Jordan Lewis in that game last week? Um, because I was sitting here thinking about you know the last two weeks Fleming has, I mean he hasn't killed you, but I'm, I, I was he's had help. Yeah, he's but had some help. He's had some help, but I wonder who who were you more surprised were, by their performance last week? And I know that Fleming played a ton of snaps. I mean he played you know all the offensive snaps. But who? I, I, but who is the not, bigger? The bigger? Not like, whoa. Not, that, not, where'd that come from? Not that I don't think Lewis can do it, but we talked about it Friday right after the game. Uh, I I thought he played more than eight snaps because of the sure. impact that he had in the game. It was yeah. it was incredible, and a, the qual the the caliber of guy he had to help sh- slow down. Okay, well, do, you me, mentioned Camara. Uh, that was really impressive. All right, let me do this then. How about I'll take I'll take I'll take Fleming out and put Anthony Brown in there. Who are you more surprised with, Anthony Brown, the way he played, or Jordan Lewis? Well, we've seen it from Anthony Brown before. We hadn't seen it from Lewis. Yeah, I mean, Anthony Lewis Brown's... was a third-round pick, and so yeah. you expect a third-round pick to start getting it. I, Anthony Brown was incredible. In I game. thought so, too. Yeah. But I think he's been playing awfully well all year in the slot. I mean, he's, his play has kept Lewis off the field, really, when you think about it, unless they go dime, which they have But see, what happened much. with Lewis is he had almost 50% participation in his eight snaps yeah. he had a tackle yeah. he had a pass defense and he had the interception right so should have had was, two interceptions and he should have had they, another they one get that ball there. that would have been 50 all right let me ask you this are you worried about a woozy this week against philadelphia with what they're going to roll out there how did you how did you, you think a woozy played last week i didn't think he was terrible but you know that philadelphia is going to attack him jeffrey jeffries matthews tate you know that's going to be the attack he just needs to stay aggressive See, okay, I mean, they, are, they are going to complete some balls. Let me ask you this. Is it – do you think about playing Brown out there? Do you no. think about Brown instead no. of Awuzie this no. week? No. And, and, and maybe Lewis in the slot? I mean, do you think about that? Um, I'm, I'm asking a lot of questions as, here. I'm sorry. Played as a unit last week, I don't mess with it. No, yeah, I wouldn't. I was, as, as we're trying to get Sean Lee back on the field here. Yeah, you know. Well, and, that's and Tyron I, Smith. Yeah. No, I think you. I think you roll with your group and you see how the game goes. But you do have that depth. You have that extra depth and guys that you know you can plug in there well, if you need to. And they they have taken Cheeto out. Now that was more of an ankle thing, but they've they've taken him out before and gone with a different look before in the middle of the season. And I think they consider Awuzie to be one of their foundation. No question. I was, curi- I was just curious. I was just curious because I'm I'm with you guys on the roll bit. I'm, all, I'm with that, but I know that Philadelphia is going to attack him. I know they're going to attack him. They're going to attack him, and they're going to attack, uh, they're going to attack Jeff Heath. How, how surprised were you that they traveled uh, Byron Jones? Several times. Yeah, I like that. I like that. But I don't know if you could do that against these guys because mm-hmm. there's too many of them. You know, they've got they, this is a three receiver team. But that is an indication they're that just, they're, they're willing. Just they're willing. Their ways. Well, they, they knew they had to do something. Yeah, yeah, they knew they had to do something. Right. They had to do something with Kamara. They had to do something with Thomas. You know, you just can't sit there and and I, I just wonder how they're going to play against well, Zach Ernst. But I, that's Mi- how I want to know. Mickey Minch mentioned Cheeto being more aggressive and physical, and he's done that. In recent weeks, I think he's done a better because he's been in position to make plays this season, and he's done a better job the last few weeks. I think of finishing those plays. And Bill's right; they they have okay. a lot of confidence. How about him. this? You travel, you travel Byron Jones, who's done this before. You travel him with Zach Ertz and let Brown play outside well, that's or Lewis play outside. That's interesting. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting thought because that used to be Bry- Byron's special, right? Yeah, specialty. Do you just say on third down or whenever you get him in long, what second and third down, and you just you just go ahead and say we we think that that's your that you're the receiver that could beat us the most or it could we cause us the most problems? Who was covering Ertz most in, in Heath. the first meeting? Heath. 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 Yeah, I thought it was going to be I thought it was going to be Woods, but it was Heath. But, so, but and they, and they and that caused him to play a lot of single safety high. Yeah, but you also need Byron on on the edge against some of those taller talented wide receivers too i mean it's you know they've got Heath weapons, wasn't yeah. bad they no. where they the were, fourth down play he made the tackle he kept him from the sticks was a great play where they struggled is when they tried to zone. take Ernst in zone yeah it was terrible 
Yeah. See, I maybe Sean Lee can help that out. There was some there's a side of me that believes that I would. Yeah, maybe you're right about that. There's a side of me that would say put Byron Jones on Zach Ertz and 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 then put the right corner if it's Lewis or Brown. You know, play them on the outside and try and match that way to cover all these guys the best you can. I, I think I, I'm not so much worried about Tate as I am Jeffrey makes plays down the field. When you watch now, they throw the ball to him. I, I, he's a down the field player. Tate looks like they're trying to find a role for him. You know, mm-hmm. they're not quite isn't that, got him. Isn't that in interesting. The, they trade for him and then they can't find a role yeah, trying to figure it out. OK. Yeah. Uh, and, and finally, as we wrap up this edition of Talking Cowboys, I do have an update on Romo. He looks like he will not have to go on IR. He's okay. not starting his broadcasting career uh, yet, but very limited activity on lots of meds for at least two weeks. Mm. So maybe we can get him back for Tampa Bay. There you go. So I'll be we'll carrying him again tomorrow. for the next two weeks. huh? It's good news. I want Romo back. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?